Welcome everyone to the top five electric cars at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show. A little bit harder than it sounds actually picking the top five this year because these things are absolutely everywhere. Before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. We have done full videos on the Honda e-Prototype and on the Polestar 2, so you can go and check those out elsewhere. I'm not going to double up and talk about them again. We're going to choose five different electric cars to talk about, starting with this, the new Peugeot 208. You can get petrol and diesel versions, but for the first time, there is an all-electric version of the Peugeot 208. This is a car I didn't think I was going to care about. I knew it was coming to the Geneva show, but meh, another small French super mini. But I absolutely love it. The power of styling, this thing just looks good. The proportions, those black wheel arches, somehow it's just reeled me in. The electric version, very interesting indeed. 134 horsepower, 0 to 60 in about eight and a half seconds. But most importantly, this thing will do over 200 miles on a single charge. Compare that to the Honda e-Prototype, which does about 120, 125 miles on a charge. And it starts to get quite interesting. We haven't got prices for this thing yet, but that's where the battleground is, I believe. I want a Honda a little bit more than this, but if it does just over half the range of this thing and this costs less, well then maybe it tips in the Peugeot's favor. Who knows? Great looking thing. A Little bit of a bum fight here over on the VW stand, but for good reason, because this is their new concept car, the ID Buggy. And if you're not smiling right now, looking at this thing, well there's something wrong with your face, because it's just fun, it exudes cool. It's just a happy little Kermit colored frog of a car. Anyway, absolutely love it. It's the latest in their all electric ID range. So you've got the ID hatch, you've got an SUV, you've got a saloon, you've got the micro bus that's coming. And this is an extension of that entire idea. All electric, as I said, super simple. Come and have a look here in the interior. It's totally weatherproof. There's nothing to get wet and electrocute you, which is clever. So no screen in the middle, you've just got a wheel, you've got two seats, you can hose it down, you've got two pedals there. You'll see there's lots of space back here for your lilo and your bucket and spade and your um, beach ball, I suppose. You can have it as a two plus two configuration, but just keep it simple. You don't want to bring the kids along. It's about going to the beach and having fun. Doesn't have quite the range of the ID because it doesn't need it. It's designed for sort of short, energetic, bursts of a drive, uh, 150 miles it will do on a charge, 200 horsepower, um, four wheel drive of course to get you across the sand um, and these chunky 18 inch wheels down here. It's super simple, absolutely love this thing and VW's got plans as well, it wants to license this out to let smaller companies around the world build it for themselves in that kind of pioneering, sharing, fun spirit that this car exudes. If they don't build this, I'll be very upset indeed. Check it out, even Seat is jumping on the EV bandwagon. This is their new hatchback, it's called the Elborn. Not the Elborn, the l Born. Don't worry, I don't understand it either. But what is it? It's their first electric car, it's based on the MEB platform, it's basically their version of the VW ID. Um, 200 horsepower, do about 260 miles on a charge and 0 to 60 in seven and a half seconds, although there probably will be less powerful, cheaper versions coming further down the line. Um, you can see certain styling similarities with the VW ID, so it's got the big wheels, these are 20 inch, whether they'll make production when it goes on sale at the end of 2020, who knows? But these A pillars are definitely a trait. You can see how they've been pushed right forward, gives the car more of a futuristic look and creates a load more room in there. What this represents though is the dawn of the modular EV. So we've seen the VW ID. Now we're starting to see all the cars that spin off it. But say it hasn't stopped there. It's got another electric car. Come and have a look at this one over here. You'll probably remember the Renault Twizy, the quadricycle, the one plus one. So the driver sits there and then the other one squeezes in behind them at the back. Well, at last, someone has copied the formula. This is called the Minimo. Not the Mini Me, but it's, um, what is it? It's a bit better than the Twizy actually, because the Twizy had doors to stop you falling out, but didn't actually have windows or any weather protection at the bottom. This is fully enclosed. Yes, you might actually be able to use it when it's raining or in the winter. Uh, around the back, quite a clever little platform. Look, 
you can put your suitcase on there and then it'll fly off the first time you go around the corner. Um, anyway, a bold move from a brand dipping its toe into the world of electric cars. All right, all right, I know I said we were only gonna do the top five electric cars of the Geneva show, but then Fiat went and pulled this out the bag. Uh, complete surprise, so I've made it the top six, because I can do that. Um, what's it called? It's called the Cento Venti, Cento Venti, I should say, um, celebrating 120 years of the company. And look at this, it's just what Fiat should be doing. It's a small, simple city car. Fiat will claim that this isn't the next Fiat Panda, but have a look online. It's what everyone's calling it because, well, it's panda shaped, it's panda sized, and it's just what the panda should be. It's an electric car, it's a forward thinking vision of what a small, usable, rough and tumble city car should be, which is what the panda does better than anything else out there. The idea behind this, super simple and super customizable. So it would only come in one color and then you can wrap the panels any way you like. You can fit four different types of roof on the top. The interior, if we come around here, James, we'll have a look inside. Ignore the uh, rear hinge doors. Clearly, they're not going to make production. But the idea is you can totally customize the interior. So you see there's a baby seat here. Well, you can clip that out and put in a proper adult seat if you so wish, or you can remove the back bench entirely and put all your luggage there instead. But the really clever bit is the batteries because you can put in one battery pack and have 62 miles range or as you go on and you need more range you can put up to three more battery packs that you can buy outright or lease so here's one you just slot it in here underneath the front seat it's quite a lovely idea isn't it that fact that if you only need a bit of range because you're just nipping around town well you don't have to buy the batteries you don't need but if you want the range you can have six times four what's that 250 miles of range in a city car that's more than the electric 208, way more than the Honda Urban EV, which is what this car reminds me most of, by the way. Occasionally, when a manufacturer gets it right, you just know it. The Panda is Fiat, Fiat is the Panda, and this car is what the future of a great Italian company should look like. Big thumbs up. Okay then, one of the big ones, the Pininfarina Batista all-electric hypercar there it is what do you think it's an impressive looking thing isn't it more impressive than that though are the numbers because this thing produces around 1900 brake horsepower four electric motors one spinning each wheel enough torque to reverse the earth's spin i'm told the target for this is 0 to 60 in under two seconds quite a bit under two seconds actually but perhaps more impressively 0 to 186 miles an hour in around 12 seconds, which is quicker than the Bugatti Chiron to give you a little bit of context. So it is massively fast, this thing, but of course it's a Pininfarina. It needs to be beautiful. This is a design house who's producing their very own car for the first time. And surprise, surprise, it is quite spectacular. Um, there are sort of shades of the new Ferrari F8 Tributo, Tributo I should say, and some of the, um, some of the styling, this kind of hole in the bonnet, an S-duct, they call it, on a Ferrari, a modern aero form, that thing. And this has got an interior I genuinely haven't seen inside this car yet, so I'm just poking my head, as you'd imagine, lots of leather, lots of screens, very modern. They're going to make 150 of these, 2 million quid each. It does beg the question, does the world really need a near 2,000 horsepower electric hypercar? But I'll say this, if this car is the one to get EVs on teenagers' bedroom walls, then, well, it definitely serves a purpose. Meanwhile, over in Audi land, we find this, the new Q4 e-tron concept. Look, it's written up there in case I forget. Um, what is it? Well, it's another electric car from Audi. It's a smaller SUV to sit underneath the existing e-tron model. It's the first car to be based on the MEB platform. That's the VW Group platform. It underpins the VW ID and other models such as that. What this car represents though is an incredible boom of electric cars from the Audi brand. Just over there they've revealed a camouflaged version of the e-tron Sportback. That's basically the e-tron that we've already seen but with a slightly sportier roof. That comes next. Then we're going to have this 
around about the end of 2020. And in between, you've got the e-tron GT. That's Audi's version of the Porsche Taycan. So as you can see, Audi is taking this electric car thing quite seriously. What do we know about this car? Well, as I said, it's smaller, so it's a rival to the Tesla Model Y, a rival to BMW's forthcoming electric X3. It's got a 82 kilowatt hour battery, range of about 280 miles, 300 horsepower, part-time four-wheel drive system. I mean, tick, 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 ticking all those boxes. What can I say? Do we like it? Yes, it's an Audi. It's smartly styled, but this is the electric car entering the mainstream. That's it, that's our top five electric cars. And if I've taken one thing away from this, I'm gobsmacked. I'm gobsmacked with the speed at which the EV has proliferated. They're everywhere. And these are cars that we can buy people. The age of the electric car is here.